Today we consider how to go about building a precious metals portfolio and some of the key considerations we all need to uh, build into that portfolio. So let's dive on in. Now this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy. So please do consider subscribing. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Callan X Mines as part of a public awareness campaign. And today we'll look at developing an aggressive portfolio which offers potential uh, big gains on the upside but also much more volatility. And we'll also look at uh, a more conservative portfolio which seeks to minimise volatility and allows for wealth preservation. Of course, this video is not financial advice and uh, is simply provided for information purposes only. Also, I've not shopped around for the best premiums here, something you must always consider doing on physical metals because the premiums are right now pretty stiff. So there are some crucial points to bear in mind when it comes to actually developing your portfolio. First, how much you want to actually choose to allocate to precious metals as a percentage of overall investable assets. Allocations here can vary uh, enormously from 10% uh, right through to 100%. Many Austrian economists like an allocation of around 60% or so, but the right amount is what is right for you. Second, what are your goals and over what sort of time scale are you investing? This may involve permanently holding physical metals to, uh, to uh, avert the impact of current debasement, but having some tradable positions, uh, which you could always exit uh, to purchase more physical metal. Here we're taking a long-term view to 2030, so we'll simply accept prevailing prices for now. Third, you must allocate your investments according to your risk tolerance. Remember, gold for stability and silver for gains. And then mining stocks allow you to leverage the increase in metals prices against a company's bottom line. Essentially, the risk-reward profile works much like this, uh, where streaming companies offer a safer investment but are often premiumly priced. Conversely, junior miners and explorers uh, offer more risk but much greater upside potential. And fourth, determine your asset allocation. And so let's consider our more aggressive investment portfolio and consider an allocation of $20,000. Personally, I see physical metal as a cornerstone of a wealth preservation strategy. So let's say that we might allocate uh, around 80% to physical metal and around 20% to stocks. Of course, you want to adjust this to your own personal preferences, but here we've opted for 500 ounces of silver at an average price of $29.48. The premiums on silver, as I've said, are pretty hefty right now, and that's reflected on our sheet here. But just remember, the silver price remains around 50% below its 2011 uh, high. In the UK, British bullion coins are capital gains tax-free, and it's worth checking your tax laws for your own country here. Now, you could literally stop here and reserve the cash now in the hope that there may be a further drawdown in the market. Of course, we saw this back in March last year, and silver hit $11 an ounce. But at that same time, premium shot up to as high as around $10 an ounce. That's if you could even get hold of the metal. And some mines actually stopped selling to the market. And I did, after all, say that we were going to be aggressive here. So uh, we're going to develop some stability by adding an American Gold Eagle coin, which comes at a much lower premium than silver and we'll offer some uh, balance and uh, reduce our volatility somewhat. Remember, gold for stability, silver for gains. Uh, so now we go on the offensive again. This might involve an allocation of around 5 to 6% to your favoured junior miners. Of course, adjust this to taste. As an example, let's look at our, an allocation to Kalanex Mines, our video sponsor for today. Their shares have had massive momentum over the last year, having made a significant silver discovery, which has uh, just recently been followed up by their rainbow discovery. 
with silver, copper, zinc and gold deposits. This offers uh, decent leverage to the uh, prospect of further increases in base metals prices over coming years. The company's focus is on discovering and then developing base and precious metal rich deposits within established Canadian mining districts. So this does avoid the prospect of jurisdiction risk. They also appear to have a strong uh, team with award winning uh, geologists on board and an experienced CEO. While they also have zero debt, cash on hand and 28% of stock is held internally. Their projects are split across three sides which are all located in areas with a long mining history for silver, copper, gold and zinc. I'll put a link in the description and please see the uh, attached disclaimer. And of course, always do your own due diligence here. And so let's now add a major established silver miner to provide that upside potential, but also help to reduce some volatility. Personally, I'd want this stock or stocks to be around two to three times larger than my junior holdings. And I've just added in here Endeavour Silver, whose stock is still trading at around a third of its previous all time high. Gold Ventures has an excellent blog and list on his site for mining stock uh, and is well worth checking out. I think the long term prospects here are very good, but there will be some crazy volatility. And for stocks, given the lack of physical premiums, you must think very carefully about your entry positions, as I've said. So do target a price that you are happy to buy certain stocks at and try to be patient. Uh, it can be very difficult, of course. If it doesn't happen, though, simply move on. And so our more conservative portfolio has gold at its very heart. This offers stability and minimizes volatility. So uh, I've allocated five gold ounces here. Incidentally, this is the amount that private citizens were still allowed to retain after FDR's gold confiscation. And then we add silver with its hefty premiums, but large potential upside, and we take 150 ounces. I've then added one of the big gold miners, Barrick, but this very much could have been Newmont or any of the uh, big ones like Agnico Eagle. I've then added uh, around 5.5% of the 20k to GDXJ. Now this is the ETF for gold junior miners. This helps minimise uh, individual company risk but offers the potential upside of the junior sector. To further minimise volatility, uh, we've reserved some cash to utilise in the case of any significant drawdown. Now this is a little controversial, but I did say we were going to be conservative here, and cash does help to actually limit that volatility despite that debasement that's taking place. And so what do you think? Our first portfolio is about beating the market on the upside, while our second is uh, really about winning through lower volatility. What are the right percentages uh, in terms of the allocations for you? Everybody's different. And this will depend upon your risk appetite, your experience in the market, as well as other lifestyle factors. Now, if you'd like a copy of the uh, spreadsheet, which can be easily uh, customized to your own portfolio, uh, do sign up to my email list, which you'll find uh, a, a link to in the description. And this will be sent out in my first newsletter. Also, see what you think of our video sponsor, Kalanex Mines. A decent pullback may represent an opportunity for a longer term position, perhaps. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.